Mark, recently you attended the so-called HEARTS meeting in Brussels. HEARTS stands for the EU Heads of Agriculture, Rural Development and Food and Nutrition Security Departments in Development Cooperation. As such, there were a quite a number of platform focal points at the meeting. Could you tell us, what is the relevance of this meeting in general and what is its added value? Uh, well, the, the Hearts Group usually uh, meets uh, twice a year on invitation of uh, DG DEFCO. Uh, therefore, uh, serves as a forum for discussion, exchange, uh, debate on recent developments at the EU level and issues uh, at stake with regards to rural development, uh, food and uh, nutrition uh, security. To some extent, it also serves as a forum for, for joint um, planning and uh, programming. So that's certainly the, the added value uh, such a group provides for the EU uh, member states. Um, at the same time, uh, it is uh, still very much an informal group. There is always sufficient room uh, provided for a discussion and exchange of views by member states, but also by the Director General uh, for agriculture and rural development, DG Agri. Um, there's also sufficient room always provided uh, for uh, an update uh, regarding the subgroups of parts, which are, for example, which include the working group uh, on land. Um, so that being said, uh, it is uh, not a technical uh, working group, uh, but a forum for exchange, discussion, um, but also for alignment of strategies and positions related to food and nutrition security and rural development. And that's certainly the added value uh, of the hard school. There were a number of key issues discussed in Brussels. For example, the EU action plans on resilience and on nutrition, or a scorecard, the methodology for better reporting and communication. From your point of view, which was the single most important item on the agenda? Well, there were a couple of uh, quite, I think, important items uh, that were discussed and that were of interest uh, to, to the members uh, of HEARTS. Certainly, um, the presentation on the progress with regards to the Resilience Action Plan um, was indeed an important one and a highlight. Um, uh, we were informed that the Commission is working on a guidance paper for colleagues in the EU delegations, but also in DG ECHO in order to better explain uh, what um, resilience is in relation to food and nutrition uh, security. And in that context, the HEARTS members express their interest um, to become involved in commenting and but also in the preparation of this uh, guidance uh, document. So as you can imagine, there has, was a lively uh, debate and exchange um, among participants regarding the definitions uh, of uh, resilience, building, and the need uh, to take on board the lessons uh, learned from years of experience in resilience uh, building by the different uh, partners. In this, uh, in this context, Germany announced the circulation of a short food for thought uh, paper on the, role, on the role of rural development in uh, resilience building. Um, and this paper is currently being prepared by GIZ on behalf of um, the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, um, BMZ. Uh, with this paper, we would like to make an active uh, contribution to the ongoing development of the aforementioned uh, guidance um, document, uh, building on our uh, experiences um, in strengthening resilience in our partner countries through the connection of short-term assistance with the long-term development and with a clear focus on fragility. So um, the uh, presentation and discussion of the Resilience Action Plan uh, was certainly uh, one of the uh, most important uh, agenda items. Um, another important item uh, was around um, the um, uh, centered around the need uh, to set up a new, a new EU working group on private um, sector in agriculture and rural development. Um, we um, acknowledge that resources are uh, limited and that not all the members of the Hearts group um, 
can actually um, put you know many resources um, into a new uh, working group and might not be able to attend the meetings um, of new uh, working groups. Uh, however, uh, interested uh, members of the Hearts Group uh, agreed to get together to discuss issues um, centering around the private sector and its role in rural development and agriculture. Um, so we agreed that this new working group uh, will be organized uh, by DG DEFCO. Uh, first meeting is likely to be called uh, on in uh, September. And Germany uh, offered um, support, actively uh, support this working group through the provision of a secretariat. So in practice, this would look like that uh, GIZ on behalf of BMZ. Uh, is, is committed uh, to provide uh, staff time and resources uh, to run such a secretariat. Um, third um, important item, um, I think, as I determined, most of the, the member states, uh, of course, uh, was um, to actively support um, development of a scorecard and methodology for reporting and communication on the recently adopted EU food and nutrition security implementation plan, uh, which was developed as a joint effort by a number of HEARTS um, members together with the European uh, Commission. And the agreement uh, was uh, made that a smaller working group of volunteers, and these uh, are mainly um, Germany, um, uh, through BMZ and GIZ, Italy, UK, France, Finland, and if I remember correctly, also Ireland, um, agreed uh, to um, um, to join a smaller working group that will work over the next couple of months together with the Commission on a, a reporting methodology. So as far as um, GIZ is concerned, uh, those three agenda items were among the most uh, important ones that were discussed at the Hearts meeting. I would like to go back to the Resilience Action Plan, which you mentioned at the beginning. The action plan is driven by the European Commission. How are the positions of the other EU members reflected in the plan? Well, um, difficult for me to answer because I can, of course, not speak on behalf of the other member states, nor on behalf of, the, of, of Germany, the BMZ. But the um, fact is um, that there is a, a, a difference between the uh, action plan on resilience and the EU food and nutrition security implementation plan, which I just mentioned earlier, um, mainly in terms of how they uh, were developed. So the action plan on resilience is very much a action plan for the European Commission, mainly for DG DEFCO and uh, DG ECHO, and uh, it's meant to serve as a guidance document for the, for the programming um, of the next um, the, you know, financial um, uh, cycle. So therefore, it, it gives uh, certainly very good uh, guidance uh, to the Commission. Uh, the EU Food and Nutrition Security Implementation Plan was developed uh, together with uh, member states and the European Commission and um, uh, has the objective really to serve as a guidance document uh, for, for the member states, including their uh, development uh, agencies. Nevertheless, I think um, the positions of most of the member states are certainly reflected in the Resilience uh, Action Plan. And we have to acknowledge actually that it is a building on previous uh, ministerial discussions on resilience, including the Foreign Affairs Council, um, uh, Council conclusions on the EU approach to resilience, which have actually endorsed the proposals in the, in, uh, in the communication. So therefore the action plan set out the kind of proposals for the way forward uh, on the implementation of the principles and priorities outlined in the respective communications. Nevertheless, um, what we discussed at the Hearts meeting is, of course, that uh, member states would uh, like to play a more active uh, role 
in um, well, finalizing the uh, guidance uh, documents, uh, which I referred to earlier. And I think uh, this would be um, the, the, the stage and the time where the member states um, could actually uh, become more involved and make sure that their approaches and the proven you know, best practices and lessons learned will be adequately uh, reflected. And as far as um, GIZ is concerned, um, we will very much um, align with the uh, German uh, position, which uh, emphasizes the role of rural development in, uh, the fra in fragile contexts. Last question, Mark. Do you have any key information or message for the platform members that are not part of the meeting, the multilaterals and non-EU members? Well, um, as uh, mentioned earlier, I think the, um, the, the beauty, you know, and the main purpose of, of the hard scoop is really that it serves as a very good and excellent platform and forum for exchange and debate. Uh, when it comes to policies, strategies, and programming for rural development, food and nutrition security um, programs. So uh, I would strongly advise, you know, that uh, other um, um, countries, you know, outside Europe or non-European members would establish a similar focus to just make sure that there is a continuous exchange, not so much on the technical level, but uh, with regards uh, to overall policies uh, and uh, strategies. And um, yeah, I mean, maybe something that we could discuss in the next HEARTS meeting is to what extent, you know, non-EU members could be invited as observers uh, to the HEARTS group, also to uh, trigger exchange with non-EU members. But again, my message would be, of course, for um, non-EU members, um, uh, yeah, just try to um, set up a similar uh, forum. Thank you very much, Mark, for this interview.